So while these talks are kind of struggling to take place, tell us what the conditions are on the ground where you are in South Sudan. Well, I think it's fair to say that the situation here in uh, South Sudan is probably as grave as it has ever been. The people continue to suffer greatly, children suffering disproportionately. About a third of the population is now displaced. Many of them have become refugees in neighboring countries, and in particular in Uganda, which has been very, very generous in receiving uh, hundreds of thousands of refugees. Uh, throughout the country, we have about another 1.8 million people who have fled their homes, and many of them are living in camps, which uh, UN-run camps, which are called protection of civilian sites. I mean, the figures go on and on, and I, I don't want to, you know, belabor them, but you've got 60 percent of the population which is struggling to feed itself, and you've got three-quarters of all children who are not uh, attending school. So, obviously, the sooner peace can be restored uh, in South Sudan, uh, the better the lives of the bulk of its citizens will be. Unfortunately, though, these, uh, these talks haven't gone smoothly so far. So do you fear the humanitarian situation could even worsen as a result? And worst case scenario, all out war uh, could actually break out again. I mean, I think if the current situation continues, and certainly if the conflict were to escalate, uh, then clearly the lives of innocent uh, South Sudanese people, mothers and their children, will continue to deteriorate. Uh, you know, the war has uh, also provoked an economic collapse. Many people, even in cities such as Juba, where I am, uh, don't have the means to feed themselves adequately. UNICEF supports a pediatric hospital. It's the only pediatric hospital in the country, uh, and that's here in Juba. There's a malnutrition ward there, and when you go there, you really... It, it, it's a heartbreaking experience because you see mothers with very sick children uh, requiring treatment for severe malnutrition. Many of them are successfully treated. They return back to their homes in Juba, but the cycle continues because the families continue to struggle to buy adequate food uh, and provide okay. adequate nutrition to their children. So what would you like to see Rick Machar and Salvakir do at this point to at least ensure some security for civilians? I mean, I think, you know, looking at the bigger picture beyond the talks that are taking place in Khartoum and that took place in, in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia last week, I think, you know, the humanitarian community and all of the people are South Sudan, of South Sudan, are united in saying, please, let's have peace. Let's have stability in the country. Let's have situations where families feel it's safe to return to their homes, to live, leave these camps where 200,000 people have been sheltering uh, since 2013, when this conflict first began. Uh, so, however it comes about, and whoever or is able to facilitate it, uh, this country is is uh, desperate for peace. And uh, early next month, it will celebrate its seventh anniversary of independence. And you know, a country that was born with such hope and optimism is quickly losing both of those. But I think, you know, as the talks continue, as long as there is hope for peace. Uh, then the country remains hopeful and we'll be looking for results.